G'day mate, welcome back to Factorio with me, JD. Uh, this is a week, well, this is episode 48 and a half, which means it's a recap episode. Gotta love those half episodes. So it means I got a little bit light of a load. I don't have to get out a whole episode, but I do have to recap everything that's happened in the week. So the idea is these are here in case you missed a episode during the week, um, or maybe two, you know, I, I, the, the more you miss, the more disappointed I am in you, in you, and obviously the more disappointed you are in yourself. But these recap episodes are here for exactly that reason, in case life got hectic um, and you happen to miss an episode or two during the week. So the let's start with this, what the series is. This is my... Sp modified SpaceX playthrough. This is why it's called Sub X, where I'm launching a. I want to do something for every subscriber because the channel, a couple of months now, now, what, three months ago, four months ago now, hit 5,000 subscribers. Since then, we've had amazing growth, growth, and I need to thank you guys for that. But what I'm going to actually do is I wanted to do something to celebrate you guys, you know, those that have made the channel grow, made the channel what it is. Um, and I could have done that by just launching a rocket for every subscriber. That would have been quick and easy and boring because, you know, 5,000 subscribers, which was the original goal, 5,000 rockets, pfft, would have blown that over in a couple of weeks. Um, instead, we're going way bigger. I wanted to launch a SpaceX spaceship per subscriber, which is about 23 launches or so, you know, give or take, one or two. Um, it also means that each single rocket needs to have some very expensive payloads in it to actually build your spaceship out in space. Um, down here, you can see what is required to launch one single spaceship. And um, across here, you can see, you know, what the requirements are for each of these components. They range from like silly expensive to very expensive to ridiculous, ex ridiculously expensive to, you've got to be kidding me, JD. You're launching that in a space? Yes. Uh, 40 of them so far and counting. Um, the plan is to launch one for every subscriber. What I'm actually doing is I'm using the YouTube API to pull out subscriber names. And with those subscriber names, I'm actually making sure that I launch a spaceship for every single subscriber. Yeah. Um, we actually have this week completed 12 launches, so where are we? Uh, <sighs> Albert and Hales Dallas, uh, Gerald, uh, Mantart, Pi, Daniel, the Lord. Where's the rest of them? Uh, Raphael, uh, Raphael. Uh, cognitive dis dissidents, uh, Bob, Builder, DBE, Dylan, Daniel, and Chris were all launched this week. So we got 12 done this week, up from 8 last week. So the base is definitely accelerating. With, you know, that's a 50% improvement. It's still a long way to go. Um, I'm up to 40 of, you know, scroll down just a little bit. You can see how many subscribers there, there are currently on the channel. At the same time, if you haven't clicked subscribe, this is your chance and this is your reminder to click the subscribe button, therefore you go towards the launch tally, therefore you go towards extending this series. Um, and extending this series is what we're doing best at the moment. Um, so this week, this week, this week, every week I'm trying to get a big build done, something big, something massive to hopefully propel the base further forward. Um, we did lots of minor things, like I, I started stockpiling some of the items required for the supporters fusion, uh, the supporters uh, rocket parts. So every YouTube member, Twitch subscriber, and Patreon member um, also gets their own special rocket uh, launched on top of their um, subscriber rocket. So, it, you know, in, in the case of fusion reactors and low density structures, well, not so much, energy shields, all these sorts of things that I needed excess of, I've started stockpiling a couple of those. So we have made some sort of progress towards bigger and better things for the next couple of weeks. Um, but on top of that, the main thing I've actually been doing this week is one giant build at the far end of the map. Um, basically, the, the things holding us up currently are anything that requires modules being speed modules, productivity modules. If it requires a module, it's slowing us down. Uh, and we're actually just gonna jump in a train and go all the way over here because we managed to get this build done this week. Um, we did kill power twice. 
and I have dumped down so many more nuclear reactors. And even then, we've got, what, 10% extra power currently? Not a lot. Uh, I've also started, because it's been requested so many times, to start building um, solar. So I've dumped down a couple of solar arrays of just basic solar, and we are upgrading them slowly to Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV. Um, I've just finished researching Mark Seven solar and accumulators. Uh, the next one's 128,000 packs each, which is a little bit expensive. So I'm not rushed to do that just yet, but you know, we'll get it done. Uh, probably at the same time we get working robot speed 13 done, which is still not on the list because I'm spending my rockets launching people and components and trying to get the ships up and running. And on top of that, yeah, my labs are just not running fast enough because I have a shortage of yellow or purple science. It's always one of the two, which is a shortage of copper on the main bus, which is a shortage of, this is a starter base. It was not designed to have this much come out of it. It was not designed to be pushed this far, this hard, but it is, and it's surviving mostly. Um, but yeah, the big project for this week was to, uh, whilst I'm looking at this train, do oh, have you start traveling around with twice the amount of concrete? Three times the amount of concrete. Cool, that makes me happier. Um, the plan this week was to get this build up and running. This build is it's it's massive. It's it's really designed to hopefully solve our module problem I'd, I'd say forever but realistically maybe for two weeks um this makes well it, it, it does the basics so it makes iron and it makes copper great we like iron we like copper they're awesome it takes the said iron and copper it runs them up the belts and then over here we start making green circuits and we're making a lot of green circuits uh, we're using compressed recipes, so rather than taking in a single piece of iron, it's taking in like a pallet load at a time. 25 pieces of iron, 25 uh, pieces of copper, which then it packs into a stack of copper cable being 25, well, 50? 50? Two, two stacks of 25? Two stacks of 25 because of the crafting it outputs to um so two stacks of 25 like two pallet loads coming out of the machine um it means means the crafting time is 25 times as long so rather than it being half a second for green circuits it's 12 and a half seconds um basically just minimizes the amount of logistic headaches i need uh rather than me having i have no idea how many how many belts this would be rather than having probably eight belts of iron six eight belts of iron four belts of iron four belts of iron and and four belts of copper into this build i can do it with just one it just simplifies the logistics a little bit also cuts down the total amount of machines i need by just making the machines slower and to counteract that i use a lot of beacons that i make the machines as fast as possibly yeah, humanly possible and then some um so yeah this is outputting a whole bunch of green circuits because we like green circuits the green circuits obviously go fine plastic all the way down at the bottom of this build uh which we had to make uh come off a brand new uh plastic build which turns out is short of coal Hang on, just a moment. Yeah, I know, I'm staying in the way. I'll move. Cool. Cool. Ish was short of coal. Um, had to make a custom oil build. This custom oil build, which I've already been pointed out, maybe I should swap over to just use basic oil processing rather than trying to use advanced oil processing and then having to crack the outputs um but yeah the idea of this build is plain and simply uh has two refineries one lot of heavy to light cracking what's that four lots of light to petroleum cracking and then spits out everything into petroleum as fast as possible which we then use the coal that doesn't exist on the belt to make stacks of plastic so again Again, we have uh, one coal, one stack of 25 coal, being like a pallet's worth of coal, with 
25 times the amount of petroleum being 500 uh, and out comes a stack of plastic bars uh yeah just just think of everything as rather than moving around a box of iron plate at a time or a single piece of iron plate at a time we're moving whole pallets now um so yeah, plastic, green circuits, which gives us lovely red circuits. Everybody loves red circuits. We take our red circuits with our green circuits. We make blue circuits. Everybody loves a good blue circuit or two. And then we put the whole lot into this build over here. Um, this build has Mark II beacons, which have, rather than having a 50% diminishing returns on your modules, these have a 0.75, so they're a little bit more effective. Um, rather than losing half the speed, you only lose... 25% of the speed um, and then on top of that uh, we're using mark 5 assemblers so we're using factory extended so we have two extra tiers of every single type of belt solar panel power pole everything like that again it's mainly there for a UPS saving um, having machines that go faster means I hopefully less you need less machines means hopefully I don't hit a UPS limit which we already hit like week number two or three of this series um so yeah we, we've got faster and faster machines and then of course uh we're doing handling everything in a pallet load at a time and we're using that to make uh speed modules and productivity modules no efficiency modules and you might ask jd why the hell are you making efficiency modules two reasons one it turns out for the next bigger and better beacon i actually need efficiency modules which sucks um on top of that uh the fast and light drive which is our currently our component slowing us down the most needs lots of modules we do have this lovely build up here that is trying its absolute hardest and i've fixed twice this week because i stuffed it up twice this week and it's still producing about one fast and light every 30 minutes obviously i'd like something much faster much 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 faster and that's the plan for this build have something much 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 faster um as you can see we have filled this box each already if you think of each one of these stacky things actually represents uh, 50 speed modules because that's what it is in reality um because it's two stacks of 25 which means it's 50 it doesn't actually have any benefit to loading them up on a pallet but you know that's just how the mod works um that's a lot of speed modules uh in fact this particular build in just the speed modules is doing per minute 10.8 multiplied by 25 it's 250 per minute 250 speed modules per minute uh that's doing three so let's let's, let's ignore that so this one as it's doing uh 250 per minute to do a fast and light drive which we just launched one of because this is our little pop-up um which actually does remind you to subscribe so you know you know it, it, it's a good reason to click the subscribe button if you haven't already uh we need 500 speed threes efficiency threes and productivity threes per minute to launch a fast and light drive so it means final base uh yes i can launch faster i need to thank uh lannister lannister for clicking that subscribe button your intergalactic spaceship is being fl flown by bob the construction bot and should be delivered to you shortly depending on intergalactic shipping times you know there are a few delays going around currently anyway as i say um this makes 250 speed modules per minute and i need essentially six times that number so this whole build here i basically need six of them to get to launching one of these per minute to launching one sub x spaceship a minute so that gives you an idea of where this series is going we're going for the biggest fattest massiest most massive mega base you have ever seen and that's what we'll hopefully work can be continuing to work our way towards next week um first thing i actually have to do next week is i have to work out some way to start bringing these back to base because that's not a long-term solution um but at least it's a solution that lets the build keep running um at the same time we're gonna have to do something with the efficiency modules i don't know whether to ship them back to base and then we can use them to start making the bigger and better beacons or fast and light drives at base or what or whether we ship them up here 
to start making fast and light drives here on site. Um, in saying that, mm, we were making a lot of productivity modules until I had to build something like this, at which point we ran out twice. Um, because we have our little build that could, that has been quitting for a long time and has been cranking out uh how many is that it's that one's finished 600 that one's finished 500 so that's 1100 uh that one's finished 500 400 so that's 2000 2000 productivity sixes have been cranked out and um yeah we've used all of them and a majority of them actually got used in this build because as you can see, every one of these is full of productivity level sixes. Not so much the smelters, because we can't afford it, but the green circuits, the copper cables, so on and so forth, all full of productivity sixes. Anyway, like I said, this is where I'm going to leave this episode. It's a recap episode, so I've just covered sort of everything that's happened this week. Um, as for next week, no idea. No idea what we're going to do next week. Um, I, I don't need to outpost yet, because my iron and copper supply is pretty good. Uh, this build up here, which does our low density structures, seems to be running fine. Um, I haven't seen a shortage uh, of low density structures back at base, rocket control units. We've got this build down here, which does a great job of... Where the hell is that train? Uh, this 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 build down here is making rocket control units. It seems to be doing a great job. I haven't seen any shortage of rocket control units. So... I think maybe next week we're going to start with silos because I have the single silo that has already launched 1700 rockets all by itself. Obviously, if I had more silos, I could potentially launch faster. Yes, I'm still being held up by um, the fast and light drives. That is still my limiting factor. I'm getting one of those out every 30 minutes or so. So I'm still limited to one, one rocket per minute basically um but yeah i think we have an opportunity to optimize things just slightly um either that we're going to take some of our our brand new speed module sixes and start wasting them around the base trying to speed things up a little bit faster but that's where i'm going to leave it for this episode thank you guys so much for watching as always thank you guys so much for uh supporting the channel those that you do i, I very very much appreciate especially in times like well all the times actually i appreciate it all the time um and thank you for of course those that have clicked the subscribe button if you haven't clicked the subscribe button and you've got like two reminders this episode i think you're a lost cause <laughs> i really do um but yeah this is where we're going to leave this episode thank you guys so much for watching do hope you're enjoying and i'll see you guys in the next episode of sub x all right bye